Good morning, good morning. Yanko. Yanko, I am sure the top of the coins. I go. Good morning, good morning. I hope we all had a good night's sleep. Oh, yes. Okay, today we, yesterday we had a sunny day, and today we have a wet day. And this is normal with the weather conditions at this time of the year in Ghana. Well, so this morning our itinerary takes us to an orphanage and also our social center. This is a private orphanage. Now, in Ghana, we have. Oh, okay, it's a school. Okay. Okay. Academy. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're going to the school that we're going to do these donations and all that. And I want to talk about the social system in Ghana. Even though we have the Department of Social Welfare, it's basically in the books, but um, we have a lot of people who are taking it upon themselves to be able to help the less privileged children in the country, especially abandoned children and all that. So we have some, the government have an orphanage called the Osu Children's Home, but one of the most popular private orphanages that the lady has been able to help children over the years is the Teshi Orphanage. Now, it is the only time okay. the only time you find parents are not prosecuted in Ghana for neglect of children, neglect of children, but it also comes to a point when one parent, especially the woman, take, we have a special unit of the Ghana Police Service known as DOFSO, that's the Domestic Violence and Support Unit of the Ghana Police Service. So one, uh, one party can go there and report you, and then they'll call both parties and look into it and realize if you are, then they'll tell, okay, no impose a fine every month, you have to reimburse or pay this to the, to the upkeep of your child. Okay. Yes, so they do that. So that is the social, so we have the Department of Social Welfare, yes, and we don't have what you call social housing, no. We all have, now, one other thing people do ask frequently is, do we have homeless people in Ghana? And I say no, and yes. Big no, and small yes. Big no in the sense that, when I move from, let's say, Accra to Almina, I'm not moving to Almina because I'm just coming to us. I might know my auntie, my cousin, somebody, a relative lives here. So my purpose of coming <coughs> is coming to stay without my uncle, my auntie, my, without my relative. So when I come in and I'm staying in that house, I must obey the rules of the house. So if it tells you I close my gate or my door at 7 p.m., it's 7 p.m. you have to be in the house. If 7 p.m. and you're not in the house, you are locked out. You, you are locked out. Now, when that continues and you find that, okay, it's not conducive, then you find your way out of the house. So in that case, you decide to maybe ask God some friends. So you decide to leave and all that. So. They do that, so we, and those people find sometimes, especially, end up with friends at the bus terminals and that, not that they don't have a home. They have a home that they can go to, but because they want their freedom and other, and they don't have the money to rent the house right now, they patch 
and the state and all that. So we have yes and no. So for example, if you are in the United States, especially when you are married to my brother or my sister, you are part, you are married, you are part of my family. You are married to everybody in that family. You are married to everybody. You are married to either the man family and the, so in Ghana when we talk about marriage is not between husband and wife alone. It's between family. Yes. So it's the family that accepts the bride price and all that. Tomorrow we'll have a long drive or explain marriage and all that and how it is. So in Ghana you don't just go on the street or at the church and say, oh, I love you, I love you. No, it doesn't work in Ghana that way. You'll be in trouble. So if you're married to my sister, my brother, your house is open to me 24 hours, seven days a week, any time of the day. So if I'm coming to you, I don't need to pick a phone and call and say, I am coming. I just get my back and I get maybe my 100 city transportation or I get my airfare, then I am there. At your door, I knock. <laughs> uh, voila, I am here. <laughs> and I stay as long as I wish. No, as long as you wish. As long as I wish to stay in that house. And sometimes I might just come with this and this. And the next morning, I, walk, I go into your closet, I look into your closet, no, you will not, and I look, any dress that fit me, I put it on, and it's normal. And then I look up to you for breakfast, for lunch, and for dinner. And you feed me until, if I'm going, sometimes, <laughs> you will, I'll tell you, Oh, in the next three days, I am leaving. Now, sometimes I might come with only in transportation, not the out transportation. So I'm just telling you to prepare that I am going. So you prepare for me, myself, and for other relatives back home because you have to give them a gift because I told them I'm coming to you. <laughs> so I can't tell you three days I'll be going and then you do all that and you buy me some gift to go and give to those people. Now, when you I stay there and three days you begin to show some sign of your eyes communicating and all that. Okay, I look at that and then I say I'm going. Now when I get back home, I tell everybody, this my auntie and my uncle, now the thing they have money, so they don't want to. I used to sit with us and all that. I went there and looked. Three days he was just doing, doing some things. Then you know what they'll do? Another person will come. Another person will also intentionally come. Just to want to see what will happen. And if he comes in, then the same thing happens. He goes and tells another person. The next time you have a call from your uh, fa uh, family head, and say, we want to see you. And say, okay. It's like, you are trying to isolate yourself from the family. But mind you, family first, not your money. So if what you're doing, if you think when you are in trouble, your money will save you, go ahead. If you, so you are creating an ally. And when they tell you this, and you don't repent, if something happened to you, don't come and call anybody. Solve it yourself. So that is how the Kenyan society, so we look out for each other. Now, when you look at all the houses from Accra to the central region or all over Ghana, what you realize is that most of the houses are built close to each other. Yes. They are built close to each other and the Europeans or the British will say it's a shanty town. Those are not shanty town. That is our traditional architecture. We build closer to each other. So if this is my family house, my family land, when I'm getting old and they realize that I'm coming, they'll tell me, okay, you take this portion, build. 
we take this portion clear. So most of the people you see around the houses, closer to each other, they are all the same family. So they are not shanty towns, but that is the traditional architecture of Ghana. And therefore, before real Christian, when Ghana was at its formative years and tradition was before Christianity, I can leave my door open and go to the farm and come back. And I can drop my wallet down and go and somebody will find it and bring it to me. You know why? They do that because when you think or you steal, you'll be in trouble. Now that trouble, the person will announce to the Gongong Peter, through the Gongong Peter, that's the chief information officer. Now the chief information officer will announce, Gong 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 will beat the Gong Gong and say that Madame Suso and So or Mr. Suso and So's item have been missing. And he suspect Mr. Suso and So or Madame Suso and So steal it. And if you don't bring the item, you don't return it, in three days' time, I'll go and consult. Now when you say I'll consult, it's trouble because he's going to the fetish priest. Now, the fetish priest, the Europeans, or you call it the witch doctor, in the traditional setup, they, they are not bad people, they are not wicked people. They are people who are the spiritual leaders of the community, who are healers, who are people who consult. So when you go and consult, and then you say, okay, I am here. I suspect Mr. Susan so still in my phone, but he's refusing. I want you to consult the oracles and make the person carry the item on his head and start shouting from wherever he is and back to my door so that everybody will see. So truly, you will carry this on your head and be shouting, I stole Mr. Susan and so's back and then they will take you to, it's a shame. So you get that shame and then you will be sent to the chief's palace and you'll be fine and all that. So when in me in those days, especially when you don't do those things, is the water region. You don't try it. You try it the next morning. <laughs> you see yourself, your hair will be like this. Uh, so you 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 so still it is not much as we see it today. But today, even though about 80 to 90 percent of Ghanaians are Christians, just open your door, just drop your wallet. The next moment you see that it's gone. And they don't even they are not even afraid <laughs> of you saying this or that. So that is how the Ghanaian society is. So you, we, if you give birth, you don't expect to look after the child alone. Everybody in that family is your father. Every woman in that family is your mother. They all look out for you. And everybody in that community, as far as they are older than you, right. you are under them. And if you don't right. comply, he had the right to beat you. That's right. That's and right. when the sun is right. up, right. shining, and you are sleeping, you can come and call you and say, get up, go and buy me this. That's right. And you have to go. So that is how we bring our Ghanaian society children are brought up. So Ghana, your teacher is your teacher. That's right. You don't have the right, and you can see that all the schools we have prescribed uniforms. Mm -hmm. And that uniform for the boys, it must be above the kneecap. Mm -hmm. Now, okay. if it's not, and it's below the kneecap, you are in trouble. The first time your teacher will call you and say, go and redo, this is not a uniform. Mm -hmm. Go and redo it. Mm -hmm. Now, that is the first warning. The second one, say, with six lashes, go and redo it. The next one, they call you to the office and the scissors is waiting. You put it in and cut it away, you cannot even wear it again. And you have to go and do another one. So is the hair. In the government schools, you have to keep your hair, trim it down like this, and not the girls especially, every whether boy or girl, you have to trim it down. You don't have to plate it or this, but that now 
teaching. In the private school, it is accepted. But in the government school, it's still just because you must be a uniform. And that is it. And one other interesting thing is that when you are going out up in the house, what they do is that they don't give each child his or her food. So if you are three boys, or you are four boys, or you are four girls, they give the girls one bowl, they give the boys another bowl. Now you all eat from that bowl. And that is why you learn how to eat fast, and they give you a small fish. Now the small fish, the elder, the older among to well, share that fish. And he has the power. So right. if you refuse, you just eat it. That's right. And say, well, he said, you know, eat. Mm -hmm. So it brings communal mm -hmm. liver. Mm -hmm. That is it. So it makes knitting together. Right. And we don't care. Four boys sleeping on one bed. Right. So if you, you all share four bed, and that is it. You can't say, oh, I don't want your body to know four, or the girls also share one. And that is how we leave or our brother in Ghana to share and value what you have. All right, we are on the Cape Coast Takradi Highway, heading towards Takradi, the first port city in Ghana. And this road will take you straight to Ivory Coast. Yes, Ivory Coast. And we are still in the central region and all those people speak the Fati language.